What's up YouTube, Eric here, Mr. Fired Up Wealth. I hope you're doing great. Brand new video today, something a little different. I'm gonna bring my five favorite stocks that I don't actually own. So they're not my five favorite stocks in the whole world, but they're my five favorite stocks that I don't currently have positions on that I'd like to own for long-term investment. I'm gonna cover a couple other things later in the video, including how to access my watch list of what I'm actually buying right now. So you'll wanna stay tuned for that. But this video is focused on five favorite stocks that I don't own that I'd like to buy at some point for my long-term investing portfolio. You're gonna to wanna to see this one, guys. Stay tuned. Okay, so this first one, Expedia, ticker EXPE. I've, I've liked this one for a long time. In hindsight, I probably should have bought it back in August. No shoulda, coulda, woulda. Would you look at the chart? Just look at it. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> yeah, well. Would you look at that? Yeah. Micro cap, or medium cap, $28 billion. This actually was a little bit more expensive, has pulled back some, but not a whole lot. All time high, $191.85, trading at $183. This is in that fashion show as a reopened trade. Do you guys know all the stuff Expedia owns? And the main reason I like it is it's a good competitor to Airbnb when you think of Verbo. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that app, but hold on a second. I'm gonna show you all the different things that Expedia owns. You could call this a pretty wide moat when you think of travel, internet related travel. These guys have a lot of stuff. So when you look at their brands, Expedia Group here, this is their media solutions department, but it shows you all the different products or the brands that they own. From Expedia to Verbo, they've got Hotels.com, Travelocity, Orbitz. You've probably used some of these to book your favorite vacations. Hotwire, this has always been one of my favorites. I don't know why. And they all kind of do the same thing. And don't get me wrong, there's competition with Bookings Holdings and, and with Airbnb. But these guys are the most rounded of the three when you think of all the different things they have to offer. And the Verbo app, I'm going to show you that in a second here. The Verbo app actually is really smooth. I like using it just as much as Airbnb. Now, Airbnb, I do like as a long-term investment as well. It's on my new 10. You can rent the new 10, go check out uh, Gumroad. You can look, there's a link in the description below and you can go look at all the different Fired Up Wealth platforms and services and whatnot. But Verbo, I mean, it's a really smooth app. This is obviously on a desktop. The application works just as smooth as Airbnb and there's a lot of competition there. So I, I like this stock. I like this company. It's just a little bit too expensive. So Expedia is the stock, EXPE. I can't tell you exactly where I'd buy it. It'd have to come down significantly and it might not happen, but it is one of my favorite stocks that I don't currently own that I wish I did have in my portfolio. Now this next stock we just covered in the last video, it was the number 10 pick on those top 10 stocks to buy now and for February and it's monday.com. And a lot of you might not know what monday.com is about. So just real quick, and I'm gonna show you the website and talk through it as well and give you a little bit more background. It's a work operating system. They call it a work OS that powers teams to run projects and workflows with confidence. It's a simple but intuitive work OS for teams to shape workflows, adjust to shifting needs, create transparency, connect collaboratively. I had to do that like three times. I had to edit it out and stop doing manual grunt work. Monday.com makes teamwork click. On the last video, I said I like this stock under 200 dollars it's back to 187 no real way to know the bottom you know the the 52 week range you know way back here on 6 10 2021 was 155 dollars new ipo from 2021 i do like it though under 200 dollars you have to dollar cost average and, and get your way in i don't own this stock i actually if i had more of a cash position i would probably add this one first but I'm not adding it currently just simply due to the cash situation. I'm building out some other positions. And so one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is I actually have a watch list. And I'm, what I'm gonna do when I'm done with this video is I'm gonna make a quick 10 minute exclusive video. So anybody that has signed up on YouTube as a member or anybody that's a patron, any tier is gonna have access to that video. If you're on YouTube and you're a member, go to the community tab. If you're on Patreon, look for a post here. You're gonna have that sometime tomorrow actually. So I'm recording this on Thursday. You'll have that by tomorrow on Friday. And I'm going to, I'm going to make a video that's basically 10 minutes long. That's going to give you my watch list. It's going to screen share all the tickers that I'm looking to buy. I'm going to tell you the amounts I'm trying to buy. And I'll talk about some of the price levels. So money.com is, is on my watch list, but it's not something I'm currently adding to at this moment. And I do not have a position in it right now. So I did promise you a little bit more information on money.com. This is their website, just money.com and work without limits. They've got lots of different products. It really is helping teams collaborate. So you can see some screenshots, give you an idea. Trusted by 127,000 customers worldwide. And this is really a macro video. I'm not going to deep dive on it. Um, I'm gonna get back into more of those deep dive analytical type videos. But right now, when there's opportunity in the market, I think it's good to talk about the stocks from high level. Most of the stocks I cover, I have deeper dives on those stocks. In fact, the next pick, a good segue, 
I've done a deep dive on this one and I'm gonna put a link above so you can watch that longer video if you're interested. So that next pick guys is Toast. The problem is it's a brand new IPO. It actually got down to $18.72 here on January 26th. It's trading at $22. This is really hard because there's no way to know how we're gonna value it. The margins aren't really that high on this stock. And it's not like a, it's not a SaaS play. I mean, it's a point of sale. So this is one of those mixed businesses when you think it's not a true pure play SaaS play. It has weird margins and it's hard to evaluate these. And there's a few stocks like that we've talked about on the channel. This definitely fits into it. It's funny because I see more and more members in the community and discord. Hey, I went out to, to eat dinner and they, you know, I use toast for the point of sale. Since that video, everybody noticed to notices toast. Toast has been around for a long time. And they do very well, especially in the restaurant sector. You know, when I think of point of sale, I think of, you know, Toast and there's a couple other names, but that one does kind of dominate. They've grown a lot. It's, it's hard because it's, you don't really know where it's going to go. If you want my personal opinion, I'd love to see the stock below $15. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it did get to 1872. That's where I might possibly add Toast. If you want a deeper dive to understand what this company is all about, I've got a video on toast, I'll put a link above. It's like a 30 minute video that goes really deep dive. Go check that out. So the next one, I also have a deep dive on this one. It's Sentinel One. I do not own any Sentinel One. It did get down to $35.90. I said below, in fact, I had a limit order on this stock back around that time when it got down to $35.90 and it was for $34.97. Now you could argue at $35, it's still expensive. It would have been a starter position. I generally dollar cost average and I buy, you know, four five, six, sometimes 10 lots if the market's really crazy. So I had a, a starter position in, it did not fill. So I currently do not own any Sentinel one. It is trading above 41 now coming back down 5%. What happened is the market sold off really hard, got some really deep levels, some, some capitulation in, in certain names like this. And it, you know, a lot of these names pop 20% and they're giving some of that back after some, some earnings misses that you guys are well aware of. And so Sentinel one is on my radar. It's $11 billion market cap, $11.7 billion market cap. I've got two videos on the channel around one and around two that compares Sentinel one to its biggest competitor. And you can go check those out. I'll put a link to round number two above. If you have not watched that video, both those videos are about 30 minutes, very deep dive analysis. If that's what you're looking for, go check them out. Now this last stock is my favorite stock on this list of five. It's HashiCorp, the ticker is HCP. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe now, click the little bell to get notifications. And if this video is helpful, guys, drop me a like, drop me a comment. It helps the algo, it helps me so I can make, continue to make videos for you guys. And if you wanna see my watch list of what I'm buying and how much, Go sign up for Patreon. Even the lowest tier, the $10 tier, will get you access to that video. It's an exclusive video, about 10 minutes, that shows you the watch list of what I'm buying in my portfolio right now. So I have a video on HashiCorp as well that goes in deep dive. I think it's 20, 30 minutes. I'm gonna go over a couple quick slides. The thing about this, 36,000 user group members, direct sales group, ecosystem of 700 partners. They've got four US patents with 19 pending. Now, if you remember on that video I did on HashiCorp, I said I was gonna hold off. The valuation was a little bit steep and I wanted to see a couple earnings reports. Generally with these IPOs, especially recently, they've run hard and they always pull back. So I am being patient on HashiCorp. Now this did actually pull back to a reasonable level on this recent sell-off and it did not stay there very long. That level is probably not a bad you know, place to start a position similar to, to Sentinel One where it was just really close to where I might've started a, a starter position. It got to like $45 and change. So a little above $45 is where it was at. You know, again, it's hard to know where this thing's going to come in at. I'd love to see it even lower, like, you know, 40 bucks or something. All these stocks have premiums. And you think of these cloud SaaS stocks, and it's just really hard to, to evaluate them because the way we used to evaluate them, everything's coming down. You know, we're kind of revaluing or devaluing a lot of these companies. So you have to be a little bit careful. I won't go into more detail because, again, I've got deep dives on the channel. I'm putting links above. I encourage you. Go spend a couple hours just looking at Fired Up Wealth and looking at the different videos we have. There's a ton of information that goes very deep dive on a lot of these favorite companies. Go check them out. But as always, guys, I appreciate your time and attention. Please drop me a comment, drop me a like. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.